In Starship Flight Test 5, we will witness a jaw-dropping event, the first catching boosters mid-air with Mechazilla. To make that possible, SpaceX said its engineers have spent years preparing and months of testing. However, these preparations for the upcoming flight are just a small part of the overall Starship project picture. All of that was recently revealed in detail by SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell. Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. Maybe you don't know that Starlink is a risky game for SpaceX in its wild days, because the satellite network and consumer services could cost $10 billion or more to build out, even more costly to develop than Starship. But the opportunity is there for Starlink to bring in many times the revenue of SpaceX's rocket business. Telecommunications globally is a multi-trillion dollar market and a growing demand for mobile internet access. It's also more familiar to investors, so there's a degree of attractiveness there and more clearly understandable. So far, SpaceX is close to reaching 4 million customers with its Starlink Satellite Internet Constellation, revealed the firm's president and chief operations officer, Gwyn Shotwell, during a hearing at the Texas House of Representatives in late September. It has been forecasted to be on track to generate a staggering $6.6 .6 billion in revenue for 2024, defying industry skepticism and rewriting the future of satellite internet. The driving force behind the development of Starlink is the Starship project. Also in speaking before the Texas Appropriations Committee, Shotwell added that her firm invested more than $3 billion over the last few years into developing its facilities in the state for Starship, with just a billion in outlays in Texas this past year. Last year, Elon Musk also stated that SpaceX expected to spend around $2 billion on Starship development, probably including $1 billion dollars in Texas. He also added that he did not expect to have to raise funding to finance that work by investing a huge money into SpaceX's Starship facilities in Texas, called Starbase. SpaceX aims to have a true gateway to Mars. Starbase has now become synonymous with the future of space exploration. The SpaceX executive shared that Starbase is a one-of-a-kind facility to manufacture, test, and launch the most advanced rockets on the planet there. This location was initially selected for its remote location, minimizing potential risks to populated areas in the event of launch mishaps. Additionally, its proximity to the equator allows for more efficient launches, taking advantage of the Earth's rotation to boost the speed of rockets launched from this latitude. The development of Starbase began in earnest in 2014, when SpaceX first broke ground on the Boca Chica launch site. Initially intended as a commercial launch site for Falcon rockets, the vision for the facility shifted significantly in the following years. By 2018, Elon Musk announced that Boca Chica would become the primary site for developing and launching SpaceX's fully reusable Starship and Super Heavy booster system. The brightest star at Starbase is currently Star Factory a new manufacturing facility, a first-of-its-kind operation that will mass-produce rockets with a speed and efficiency that is far beyond anything the aerospace industry has seen before. According to Elon Musk's goal last year to achieve Mars colonization in roughly three decades, we need ship production to be 100 per year, but ideally rising to 300 per year to keep up with the insane production rate of up to 300 giant ships per year. You can imagine how huge size of Star Factory that is equivalent to a Tesla Gigafactory. The building features a square layout, which is shaped so around 244 meters by 244 meters. It stands out with white panels, with black cladding and glass on the front, and extends up to the location of the old tents, original ring yard, and mega bay too. SpaceX plans to leverage advanced manufacturing techniques similar to those developed at Tesla's Gigafactories. These techniques have proven successful in the automotive industry, and SpaceX is betting they can be equally effective in the aerospace sector. The principle here is the machine that builds the machines, and think of the Gigafactory as the motor that keeps Tesla's production running. In addition, can't help but mention the project, the two towers that were mentioned by Elon Musk in August. In addition to Starship's first operational tower called Mechazilla, SpaceX has been constructing the second one. The second launch tower completed its stacking in August and comprises nine segments and stands at an overall height of 145 meters, similar to the first one. However, due to the change of the last two sections of the tower, segment nine becomes much heavier. This contributes to the certainty of the entire system. Elon also believes that Tower B will be robust to one thousands of landings. 
With the stacking complete, the tower is still awaiting the installation of the orbital launch mount. And in fact, the delivery of the huge new Starbase Tower 2 launch mount pieces took place in October. In addition to investing in facilities, SpaceX has also invested significantly in the rocket itself. SpaceX's president, Gwyn Shotwell, said, Starship is capable of launching over 150 metric tons to Earth orbit, of course. That is Starship's standard payload capacity, and SpaceX is on track to increase that capability by creating the V2 and V3 generations. Shortly after the Starship Flight 2 last November, Elon Musk revealed the first information about Starship's second generation. Version 2 of the ship holds more propellant, reduces dry mass, and improves reliability. Initial assessments suggested that this updated vehicle would feature Raptor Version 3 propulsion. 33 Raptors Version 3 each generating roughly 250 tons of force, will power the booster with 8,240 tons of force, whereas the ship's initial thrust is 1,600 tons, equivalent to six Raptor 5-3 engines. Raptor 3 promises to deliver more thrust, higher specific impulse, and various other improvements. Starship version 2 will have a height of 124.4 meters, which is slightly taller than V1 by 3.1 meters. However, despite the smaller increase increase in height, the stretch is more prominently reflected in the ship. An additional 1.8 meters allows for an expanded propellant area, capable of holding an extra 300 tons. On the other hand, Booster will experience a slight increase of 1.3 meters, adding 350 tons of propellant. This difference in propellant capacity aligns with the expectation that Super Heavy, as the initial liftoff stage, would require more propellant. Starship version 3 represents a significant leap forward and is perhaps the most emblematic demonstration of Elon Musk's vision for a future star Starship that is larger, more advanced, and capable of interstellar travel. This version, as Musk mentioned, is the culmination of thousands of design improvements, some of which are highlighted here. Most notably, Starship version 3 will be larger in size, towering at 150 meters tall, surpassing even the current launch tower in Boca Chica. The ship itself has also undergone significant dimensional enhancements, with a height of 69.8 meters, similar to the total height of the Falcon 9, while the booster stands at 80.2 meters. In perspective, Starship 5-3 is 28% larger than V-1 and 20% more substantial than V-2, exceeding Elon's initial expectations. Additionally, Starship version 3's upper stage marks a significant milestone as the first version powered by nine Raptor V4 engines, featuring a combination of three sea-level engines and six vacuum engines. This configuration enables the spacecraft to achieve an initial thrust of 2,700 tons representing a substantial increase in power and capability. Perhaps even more astounding is the boost in thrust for the booster stage, which is poised to reach a new record of 10,000 tons of force. This extraordinary feat is made possible by a total of 33 Raptor 4 engines, each boasting an impressive thrust of 303 tons. The astonishing benefit of Starship's immense size is that it makes SpaceX's dream of delivering more than 99% of its mass into orbit a reality, as Elon said on October 7th. Once Starship is flying regularly, SpaceX will deliver over 99% of mass to orbit, unless some other company creates a large, fully reusable rocket. Furthermore, it would expand SpaceX's capability for rideshare missions, when rockets carry additional satellites with their primary payload. Starship would have enough extra space for the secondary payloads to pay for the launch, effectively subsidizing launches of the company's own Starlink satellites. Beyond carrying cargo, SpaceX plans to use Starship to carry people into orbit and even to the surface of the Moon and Mars. While a flight to orbit on SpaceX's Crew Dragon capsule costs upwards of $200 million for four passengers, Starship would unlock incredible opportunities. According to experts, because it's reusable, you could imagine trips around the moon in the $100,000 range. This would pave the way for the wave of commercial human tourism market in space, where human space flights have historically been almost entirely driven by government budgets. There's also potentially the market associated with human space flight, which has historically been almost entirely driven by government budgets, Carissa Christensen, CEO of Bryce Space and Technology said. There's a commercial human tourism market in space, and we're just seeing the beginnings of that. Overall, Christensen believes Musk has brought 
brought a Silicon Valley mindset to an industry that was dominated by defense-focused government contractors for decades. Taking on multiple extraordinary ambitious projects at once is very well aligned with a company identity of transforming not just an industry, but arguably transforming the world, Christensen said. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.